And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Sukomimus, which was a request from Cole via Patreon. So thanks, Cole. The name means crocodile mimic, and it was a spinosaurid with a crocodile-like skull, and it lived in the Cretaceous in what is now Niger, Africa. The type species is Sukomimus tenerensis, and the species name is after the Tenere Desert where Sukomimus was found. Paul Serrano and his team found Sukomimus fossils in 1997. David Vericchio found the first bone, a thumb claw, back in December 1997. They found a partial skull and skeleton, and Paul Serrano and his team described Sukumimus in 1998. In 2007, the Furcula wishbone was described. It was found in a 2000 expedition. And in 2002, some scientists said that Sukumimus was the same as Christatusaurus laparenti, which was found in the same formation in Niger. Christatosaurus was named earlier in 1998 than Sukumimus, but they proposed that the two were actually a second species of Baryonyx Baryonyx tenorensis. Confusing, but anyway. <laughs> Sukumimus is part of Baryonychinae in Spinosauridae, and it's similar to Baryonyx, which is a dinosaur from England, and they both had strong forelimbs and large claws on their thumbs. Sukumimus is larger than Baryonyx, but it's unclear how old the specimens were when they died. Sukumimus had neural spines that may have held a low crest or sail. This skin sail, or maybe it was a hump, may have been used for thermal regulation or storing food. The neural spines were large, which might mean it was a hump to support the weight. Really makes it sound a lot like Spinosaurus. It does. <laughs> uh, Baryonyx, on the other hand, didn't have neural spines, but the specimen that they found wasn't an adult. So some scientists think that Baryonyx and Sukumimus were the same and that they grew neural spines as they aged, but it's not clear if this is true. You'd need to find a specimen that shows the intermediate development of these neural spines to know for sure. Yeah, or like a really good separation in size or something where mm -hmm. you could kind of see the distinction. Gut contents. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't help in this case. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sukumimus, the find of Sukumimus, helped scientists better understand Spinosaurus as you were saying, Garrett. So Sukumimus is actually more closely related to Baryonyx than Spinosaurus, and that means that Spinosaurids may have been across Pangaea, but then were split up by the opening of the Tethys Sea. So then Europe or Laurasia, Spinosaurids evolved separately from South America, Africa, Gondwana, Spinosaurids. Then there may have been a dispersal event in the early Cretaceous, Europe to Africa, that led to Sukumimus in Africa. Yeah, that's interesting that they say that considering Spinosaurus is from Africa too. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of that distinction in what causes these evolutionary changes. Because we're starting to see some dinosaurs where they actually did have a lot of differences, even though they were in the same area. So I wonder if maybe they were different sizes and feeling different niches that way. Yeah, for no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the subadult Sukumimus that they found was estimated to be 34 to 36 feet or 10.3 to 11 meters long and weighing between 2.7 to 5.2 tons. Gregory Paul estimated in 2010 that it was 9.5 meters and 2.5 tons. But anyway, an adult Sukumimus would have probably been larger. Sukumimus had a long, low snout and narrow jaws and long, narrow nostrils. It had a short, muscly neck. It lived in a swampy habitat, but the rest of its body wasn't great for an aquatic lifestyle. It did have powerful hand claws and conical teeth, about 122 of them, that were finely serrated and curving slightly backward. They weren't too sharp. The tip of its snout was enlarged sideways, and it had some longer teeth, seven on each side of the skull. It ate fish and probably carrion, dinosaurs and pterosaurs, though it's not clear if they hunted or scavenged. And the teeth would have been good for grasping, not slicing. They had a solid roof of mouth, so it could withstand prey twisting in its mouth, which is also probably better suited for scavenging than hunting. But Sukumimus claws would have made it easy to slash small dinosaurs, like Oranosaurus, while holding it in its mouth. Sukumimus fossils, if you want to see them, are in the Musée National du Niger collection. Cool. Now we got to go to Africa, too. There's so many places. 